Did you know that molasses, that dark, sticky stuff you probably associate with gingerbread cookies and grandma's pantry, was once the most popular sweetener in the United States? That's right. Before refined white sugar took over the world, this syrupy byproduct of sugar production was king. It was cheaper. It was readily available. It packed a nutritional punch. But like many great things, it was pushed aside for something newer, shinier, and, well, whiter. We're going to pull back the curtain on this forgotten champion of the sweet world. So grab your apron and let's get sticky. All right, let's demystify this substance. In the simplest terms I can muster, molasses is what's left over when you make sugar. Imagine you're at the beach and you scoop up a bucket of wet sand. You let the water drain out and what's left behind is the sand. In our sugary scenario, the sugar crystals are the sand. The dark mineral rich syrup that drains away is the molasses. It's the concentrated juice of the sugarcane plant, stripped of most of its sucrose, but holding on to a whole bunch of other good stuff. Not all molasses is created equal, light, dark, black strap. Those names mark stages of the sugar making process. Each time the juice is boiled and sugar crystals are removed, the liquid gets darker. It gets less sweet. It gets a lot more intense in flavor, a spectrum of sweetness and sass. So, how do we get from a stalk of grass to a jar of syrup? It all starts with the harvest. Sugarcane, a giant grass that can grow up to 20 feet tall, is chopped down and transported to a mill. Once there, the cane is crushed, shredded, and pressed between massive rollers. This process is all about brute force, squeezing every last drop of sweet juice from the plant's fibrous stalks. The juice that emerges is a greenish murky liquid called, quite simply, cane juice. Next up is clarification. The raw juice is heated and treated with an alkali, usually slaked lime, which helps all the gunk, bits of stalk, dirt, waxes, and other non-sugar solids clump together and either sink to the bottom or float to the top. This clarified juice is then skimmed and filtered, leaving us with a much cleaner amber-colored syrup. So we've made our molasses. Now what? Beyond its starring role in holiday baking, molasses is a culinary multitasker. In baking, its hygroscopic nature, meaning it attracts and holds on to water molecules, makes for incredibly moist and chewy cookies, cakes, breads. It also contributes a deep, complex flavor that white sugar just can't replicate. It's the secret ingredient in classic baked beans, adding a smoky sweetness that balances the savory pork, tangy tomato. But its uses extend far beyond the kitchen. Remember all those minerals we talked about, especially in blackstrap? Iron, popular for combating anemia. Calcium, great for bone health. Heck, it's even a key ingredient in the production of rum. Let's not forget its industrial and agricultural applications. Molasses is a fantastic, cheap source of carbohydrates for livestock feed. And here's a fun fact for you. The Great Molasses Flood of 1919. In Boston, a massive storage tank holding over 2 million gallons burst, creating a 25-foot wave of syrup that crashed through the streets. We've journeyed deep into the sticky heart of molasses, from the sun-drenched sugarcane fields to the boiling vats of the refinery. We've seen how simple cane juice is transformed through a gauntlet of heat and pressure into light molasses, into dark molasses, into blackstrap molasses. We've learned that it's not just a sweetener. It's a flavor agent. It's a texture enhancer. It's a health supplement. It's even an industrial workhorse. The next time you open a jar of molasses, I hope you'll see more than just a thick, dark syrup. See the science of crystallization, See the story of a byproduct that became a star. See the potential for incredible flavor in your own cooking. Move it from the back of the cabinet to the front. It's earned its place. The beauty of food science is that the learning never stops. Understanding the how and the why behind our food makes us better, more creative cooks. What are your favorite ways to use molasses? Family baked beans recipe? Secret barbecue rub ingredient? Any other misunderstood ingredients you'd like me to tackle next? Leave your thoughts, questions, and brilliant suggestions in the comments below. Now, go get cooking!